Hi, and welcome to Algonaut in the studio. My name is Tim Karn, and today we're going to look at making a dub techno track. Dub techno is basically filtered delayed chords, um, muted, minimal percussion, and sub bass, as well as other sounds that have generally heaps of reverb and heaps of wash on them. So we'll start with a kick. Uh, I'm going to use Atlas because it's an easy way to find samples. Atlas is loaded. Let's look for a kick. I'm just going to use the welcome pack. That sounds pretty decent. Put it into the first slot. All right, let's make a clip. C3 should trigger Atlas. Duplicate that. One, two, three. Okay. And I'm also going to duplicate this loop twice. Close Atlas. So we can see now four bars. I might add a few ghost notes in there. Maybe one here and one here. Cool. Um, play that. Sounds all right. All right, so let's get some chords going. And we're gonna use Massive for this tutorial since everyone has Massive, and I think it'd be interesting to see the chords done in that synth. So Native Instruments, Massive. All right, so essentially what we want for this chord is just a triad using a saw wave. Um, so I'll dial this first oscillator to to the right so it's on saw only. I'm going to reroute this filter section so it's in serial and the output's coming from mix 2 which means essentially this, it's going to go from the oscillator to filter 1 to filter 2 and then to the master. Uh, I'll put this on to DARP because it's a bit more analog sounding than this top one. A little bit of resonance. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to work in F so that's too high. I'm just playing a triad on my keyboard. Um, that's better, a bit lower. All right, let's get some notes in there. So, a triad in F. Okay, so a triad, a basic triad is just your one, your, your first, your third, and your fifth note in the scale. So that's gonna be F, G sharp, and C2. So I'm just gonna punch those in. Pull C back up, all right. Woohoo, we're off. Okay, so. First things first, let's get an envelope on this filter cutoff. So I'm gonna get this first envelope and using this little arrow icon, I'm gonna put it into the first box of this cutoff. So I'm gonna turn the cutoff down to like the, the lowest level sort of we potentially want it and then drag that up. And that's essentially applying envelope amount. Um, so, so the sound's cutting off short now, so let's make it longer. I'm gonna go to the volume envelope, which is the fourth one and increase the release kind of hear it in the background. You do the same thing with the cutoff envelope as well. Yeah, sounds good. Get that down a bit. Sweet, I think we're off. Um, maybe just now I might apply a bit of chorus as well. Yeah, stereo spread. Okay. So now what we need is some delay. Let's go to Ableton Audio Fix. Bomb delay will do the job. Dial the feedback up so it really delays out. I'm also going to change this um, beat offset percentage. Um, just a little bit away from zero so it sounds a bit more, just a, just a little bit out of time so it's a little bit more um, organic sounding and not too perfect. Now we need some reverb, so we'll get the reverb, we'll make this eight seconds. And I might also just raise this, um, I should keep this open. Um, Diffusion network for the highs, so that's going to go up to minus 95. This is just going to mean the highs will travel um, nice and long. Otherwise, if it's down too low or really low, you can hear the highs actually cut away really fast. But you want all those highs in there. All right. Um, so usually, what you would do is you would do heaps of automation, and we might touch on that a little bit later. But um, for now, because we're lazy, I'm just going to use the auto filter. I'm going to chuck this in front of the delay. Get a bit of resonance. Dial it back. 
So what's quite cool here is, as you can see, as you can hear, if um, I raise the cutoff and let some highs through, they will get caught by the delay and reverb and um, carry on. So what we kind of want, because we're lazy, what we might do is have this automatically shifting up and down. And to do that, we can just use the LFO. So I'm going to dial this up. This is essentially the LFO amount. What this is going to be doing is causing this cutoff to kind of go up and down in the background. And then this right here is the speed of that. So I might keep it slow for now. So this is the lazy way of getting it working. Obviously, you would do it probably with automation. Um, I might also chuck a compressor at the end of this to kind of glue it all together for the moments when the delay and stuff get kind of quiet. So everything's a kind of a consistent volume. So let's say we're going to like four to one. Um, bit of a longer release. And we'll just might turn that makeup off because it's actually off-putting. All right, that seems pretty good. Um, could even do a bit of side chain, but we'll do that in a bit. Um, before we can continue, some things you might want to think about if you're making this your own song um, is how you can make this chord sound like your own, give it your own character. The first thing I would probably try is I'm playing with the notes. Um, so right at the moment we're only using a basic triad of the 137, 135, but what we could do is we could add another note in there. setting the fourth note in the scale or the second yeah I won't drag it next time that makes it sound terrible um, or even a lower note so if we're using F we can add a lower F in there or you can invert the chords so you can maybe take the top note and if you hold shift and up and down on the keyboard this will put it up and down an octave Zero, just mute it. It's getting a bit low. You could try it the other way around, get rid of these two and put them up. So there's some things you can do with notes. Um, I'll put this back to the triad again. And as for making it sound lush, some things you could try. Um, I've, put, I've already tried putting some chorus on it, and that can help. Um, what we could also do is dial in a second oscillator and detune it just a little bit. By detuning it, it will kind of make it sound a bit swirly. Which you can possibly hear. Um, we could also try and make this a super saw. So if we go to um, voicing, we can use some of this. So if we dial up the unisono, what this is essentially going to do is for every note that's been used in the piano roll, it's going to play essentially the oscillator four times, um, if I dial it to four. Um, and then if I turn this on and increase the pitch on the cutoff, it will play those four voices at a slightly different pitch to give it, to give it that super soul kind of sound. You can definitely I'll go a bit extreme. That's too much, obviously, but... bit and then also if you turn on pan position and push that to the right or left it will pan those four voices it's actually sounding pretty good the last thing I might do before we carry on is um, get rid of some of the lows in this because it's going to be a problem later on when we're doing a bass line so I'll chuck this at the ends All right. Um, oh, and I guess the last thing I should really talk about are things you might want to automate as well if you weren't going to use this auto filter method. So one obvious thing, and I like to, I like to use the macros in Massive. If we we can attach macros to certain things in the UI. So if we use this little um, arrow icon here, I can attach this to the cutoff. Say, dial that up, and now when I dial this knob up, it's going to push the cutoff up. with. Uh, another thing you could play with would be the decay time of the envelope. 
so I'm going to dial this to came back a little bit. So you can hear it's quite snappy. Put this on the decay, dial it up to like 2 o'clock position. Might even put a bit on the release as well. Makes it pretty long. And the last thing will probably be to control the um, the envelope amount, which remember was this first box here on the cutoff. So I'll take the third knob, and I'm going to put this on the third box. I need to turn this little SC on, and then this little dash icon needs to go to a vertical arrow now pointing up. So what this now means is that this third knob will control how much around the circle the um, number one box goes. So at the moment you can barely hear anything, but if I turn it up, this essentially playing with the becomes the envelope amount control. So you could play with all of these. If I um, configure these, put these into Atlas, I'm just going to click on the three knobs. Now they're in, ready to be automated, and I have a control in front of me. If I map these up to MIDI, one, two, three. So I now have control. Let's move on. Okay. Let's dial this back just a smidgen actually. I need to do it on my controller. Alright. Let's get some more percussion going. So, uh, Atlas. I'm going to get a hat going, but actually not a hat. We're going to get a shaker going. An underused percussion sound. I find they sound better as sort of soft offbeat um, highs. Um, so let's find a shaker. Good. All right, let's get to the second slot. Um, make some notes. This is going to be controlled by C sharp three. There it is. Just duplicate this. Again, two or four. We got to chuck some ghost notes in there as well. a bit of routing as well. I'm going to create a new audio channel, open up the input output dialog box, and in Atlas I'm going to route the kick out a separate channel, channel 2, and send it into this audio channel here. This will be for side chaining. So we're going to go audio from Atlas channel, channel 2, monitor, in. There's our kick again. Isolated. Now what we can do is chuck some side chain on our chords. Is that what if it's even on? No, it's not. There we go, movement. Okay. Side chain from audio. I wanted to rename that to make things easier. Kick. Four to the floor. Okay. Up those shakers as well, so if they're on channel, let's rename this shaker um, Atlas channel three shaker Atlas channel three. Okay, I'm gonna chuck some reverb on this to give it a kind of like soft uh, noise layer. second chain, we go to the first chain which has the reverb on it, so there's two chains, dial this to full wet, and then use this volume as a sort of dry wet knob, essentially it's going to 
dial and the reverb, which you can kind of hear in the background. The cool thing now though is that I can sort of show you what I mean. A solo in effect. Dry shaker, reverb shaker. So what I'm gonna do is chuck a phaser on that after that reverb. Maybe we'll put some more. No, it is there. Slow it down. All right. No, nah, Earth is good. Dial that back. Just a bit of movement. Might slow it down even more. That's fine. Back to our song. All right, let's get a, let's get a snare going. A snare or a clap could be either or. Just something that sounds short and punchy. Short and snappy.
Dub Techno. Sounds like Dub Techno to me. Thanks for watching. <laughs>